he doesn't know the origin of their disagreement. As he gets there, and he saw that, said, what did you do that? Don't talk to me like that. I, I will show you something. Already, this man that has come in, he begins to remove his clothes. He begins to look for broken bottles. He said, leave me alone with them. And they say, what, do you, what is happening? How, what do you know about the matter? He says, don't worry. Anywhere I see fight, whether I see the origin or not, that like Sodom and Gomorrah. The people said, get out of this way. We're going to show this man something. And then we're told, in the latter part of verse 9, and they pressed so upon the man, even Lord, and they came near to break the door. When it came to that point, they were told that the angels put Lord inside and smote those men with blindness. That is that one is the deposit of the judgment to come. The judgment to come was still more serious. Fire was going to come upon Sodom and Gomorrah as a foretaste, as a forerunner of the judgment to come. They gave them blindness, all of them young and old. Do you know something surprising? After the smoke there was blindness, in verse 11, they wearied themselves to find the door. They were still looking for the door. The initial judgment did not deter them, did not stop them. The forerunner of the judgment to come did not stop them. Their lawlessness was so great that in the presence of those ambassadors of mercy, they still wanted to perpetrate their evil and their murderous nature. That's why now the angels told the Lord, we actually came for inspection. We have seen what we wanted to see. If you have anybody in this place, bring them out. Because judgment is coming on this Sodom and Gomorrah. I want to tell you that judgment is coming upon the world. The world of evildoers. The world of sinners. Every city, every community every family and every society that day will come finally a great day coming a great day coming when the sinners and the saints shall be parted left and right judgment will come indignation will come the wrath of god upon sinners will come don't you let anybody tell you there is no day of judgment there is a day of judgment it was then that in the angels of mercy, they told Lord, do you have anybody here? Any relative here? Any nephew here? Any cousin there? Any in-law here? Anybody related to you here? Go to them. Go and tell them. You don't have too much time. Go and announce to them that this is the moment of mercy. Bring them out of this place. Point number two. Lingering before the angels of mercy. Lot went out. And as Lot went out, we're looking at verse 12. And the men said unto Lot, as thou hear any besides, son-in-law, thy sons, 
thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in this city. Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lord went out and spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, oh, up, oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. The ambassadors of mercy, the angels of mercy, they gave the message to Lord. Lord, when you give the message to the people, the angels of mercy, they are now giving the message to us. The preachers of the mercy of God, they are now giving the message unto us. That judgment is coming. That if a sinner sins so many times, even though the judgment might not have come yesterday, but the judgment will come. And the Lord has given you the message. Go and tell your neighbor. Go and tell your family. Go and tell everybody. A, a day of judgment is coming. And, and, and so Lot went out. And then he told them. And Lot went out in verse 14. And he spake unto his sons-in-law. Which married his daughters. And said, Ah, don't waste time. Make up your mind. Decide today. Get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. He said, What happened to Uncle today? What happened to Papa today? Look all around. God is going to destroy this place. Any atomic bomb, any fire, any truck of uh, coming from any barracks. Where is the sign of destruction? And they began to make fun, they began to make jest. Just a laugh today will burn fire tomorrow. Those who jest about the word of God today will suffer in the fire tomorrow. Those who say eh, all those things they are talking about, we will not enjoy life. Who can see drink and not drink? All these uh, beautiful women going around in the city. Who can see woman and not get near? All this money of belonging to the government. Who can see money and not take? All the pleasure of the world. Who can see pleasure and not take part in it? That's how they were jesting. Those who jest today will be judged tomorrow. And then eventually, that's why the angels of mercy, they said, don't let us lose everybody. If those people are not responding, if those people are not repenting, if those people are not coming out, then you yourself, Lord, and your wife, and everybody, all those who are here, in verse 15, when the morning arose, then the angels hastened, Lord, saying, Arise, arise. Isn't that what I tell you every night? And I said, Don't stay back there. Don't sit back there. Don't wait until the hand of God will come upon you and strike you. 
isn't that what I tell you, announce to you every night? That you will not just relax and wait, waiting for the judgment of God. Isn't that the unchanged message I've been bringing to you every time? And I say, arise. Don't sit down waiting for judgment. Take thy wife and take thy daughters, which are here. When you are coming, don't come alone. If you want to be saved, I about your wife. If you want to be saved, I about your husband. If you want to be saved, I about your children. If you want to be saved, I about your friends. If you want to be saved, I about your neighbor there. And you know, you when you see somebody rising up, responding to the announcement of the angels of mercy, you will not just sit back and say, uh, uh, is this uh, what we had that is making this fellow to run forward like that? Is it uh, this thing they quoted from the Bible that is making this? Do you look at this, uh, you know, dignified man, dignified woman? Look at them going forward. Is it just this that we have had that is making them to run forward? You will join them. While others are escaping, are escaping from a burning house. While they are escaping from the judgment of God. While they are running from the judgment of God. You will join them. And when you get back to the house. If your wife will call you. After, after the meeting tonight. And then your wife will begin to jest. And saying daddy. When they said uh, come out. What did you do? Did you go out like those young people? Of course. Of course. I was afraid of the judgment of God. I gave my life to Christ. All those evil things. No more. If your wife would then begin to laugh. <laughs> oh, this, oh, this, this is how they have been preaching this thing. Heaven is going to fall. Heaven is going to fall. And heaven has not fallen. You will not laugh with that woman. You begin to cry. Tears in your eyes. You will kneel down before your wife. My wife, how can I go to heaven and you go to hell? How can I be in the bosom of Abraham and then you are in the bosom of Satan? How are you making jest of the message of the angels of mercy? Why are you talking like this? You begin, to, you will lose appetite. That your wife is saying that the message coming from heaven is nonsense. You will lose appetite. You will kneel down there before her. You begin to cry and to pray until your wife will see the seriousness of this message coming from heaven. Until she will kneel down with you. And say, my husband, I'm sorry. That heaven, we're going together. You and your wife, you will get to heaven. You and your husband, you will get to heaven. You and your children, as for me and my family and my children, we're going to serve the Lord. Pharaoh told Moses, said, you men, you go. You go and serve the Lord. Leave your wives and your children behind. Moses said, not a who are we going to leave behind. Everyone, we're going to serve the Lord. All you who are here tonight, I declare we're going to serve the Lord together. This judgment, you will escape the judgment. The fire indignation of God that is coming upon the world, you, you are here tonight, you will escape. 
And so the angel said, Lord, take your wife and your daughters who are here. Come out of the city. So that you'll not be consumed in iniquity of the city. Verse 16, while he lingered. While he lingered. He had some things in the city. A house there. A shed there. The farm of cattle there. The servants who are there. The shop over there. His mind could not leave those things in time. That's why he was lingering. And, and, and the why. The jewelry in the box there. And all those uh, dresses over there. And the card for the party coming next tomorrow. And all the drunkards that she know were coming, she was preparing a feast for them. And therefore, her mind was lingering. Judgment is coming. The fire is coming upon the city. Up, get you out of this place. But because of the attachment to the things of the world. Uh, that's why they were lingering. Lingering before the angels of mercy. Thank God for his mercy. I said, thank God for his mercy. And then in verse 13, and it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, they said, escape for thy life. The angel